Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing a course review of CS7641, which is Georgia Tech's machine learning graduate level course that I took in their online master's in computer science program this past semester. I'll start by doing like a brief overview of the course and what my outcome was. So I think generally speaking, most people consider this to be one of the hardest classes in the program. It is required by the machine learning specialization. If you're one of the other specializations, then you don't have to take it. And I wouldn't unless you're really interested in machine learning. So my outcome was I got a 69 as like my total final grade, but with the curve that ends up being an A and that also doesn't factor in the final exam grade will replace your midterm grade if you did better. So obviously that 69 is a little higher in my case. Um, it's just not reflected, I guess, in that number. I'll start by doing a little overview of the four major assignments since this is very much a project-based course and then I'll also talk about the midterm and final. So I'm sitting down now, I've got my dev computer in front of me. Uh, just trying to like refresh my memory about these assignments and whatnot. And before I start talking about the first assignment, which is supervised learning, just like a word on the assignments in general is that they're all report based. You will spend a lot of time running the experiments. So actually like writing the code and running the experiments against your data set or problem that you've chosen. But you will also spend a pretty sizable amount of time writing the report, which is what actually gets turned in. So they only really care about this report, which is like a PDF of your written analysis and introduction to the experiments. And you kind of reason through your findings and talk about like what you learned, why you got the results you did, etc. You do turn in like a readme of a link to your code repo as well as instructions on how to run it. But I'm fairly certain that they don't care about it really and will only look at your code if they see something kind of fishy in your report that you write that you write up. These reports are pretty long or it seems pretty long at first, but once you see and actually like start writing up all the stuff that you're supposed to, you can see that these page length constraints can be actually pretty tight. Uh, it kind of just depends assignment by assignment. So the first assignment was supervised learning, and I actually felt like this was a pretty valuable assignment. Overall, I think supervised learning is like a topic or section of machine learning that is very useful, and I've seen it at work, you know, teams using supervised learning techniques like random forest to generate like pricing estimates for quotes. So I was already pretty interested in this like section of machine learning going into it. And this could totally be its own course if it wanted to. Just some commentary on the course overall is that it stuffs like tons of information into one project. So with everything, it, it feels kind of rushed. Um, but I do think that this was one of the assignments where the TAs were a little more clear on what they wanted, like what graphs to include for each algorithm and each step. I am a little biased. I got like a 93 on this one. So it was definitely one of my better scores for the assignments. And what we're supposed to do is implement five learning algorithms, uh, decision trees, neural nets, boosting, support vector machines, k nearest neighbors, and apply them to two data sets of your choosing. And these two data sets are the data sets that you can use for later assignments throughout the semester. So it is important to pick a set of data sets wisely. I mean, you can change data sets if you have to for later assignments, but I think you're kind of signing up for more work if you go that route. So hopefully you don't have to. Just some tips on, I guess, choosing data sets. It's important to kind of think about them in tandem. Naturally, when I was like looking for data sets, I wanted to choose like two data sets that were as easy as possible, but while still being interesting but you kind of have to think about them in tandem. So what I did was I chose one data set that's like very clean, very neat, pretty small, only numerical uh, input variables and like a binary classification problem. Whereas I chose the second one where I was also like a binary classification problem, 
but I had to kind of encode it to make a binary classification problem. You know, like possible outputs were like one through six. So then I said three and below is, you know, zero, the, and then the rest are one. And also it had categorical variables for the other one, um, required some data cleaning and whatnot. So I just think it's important to kind of like choose two data sets that are pretty well known. So that way you can like find resources and look at examples on Kaggle. But you also want them to be interesting and be able to like contrast and show like the differences between the two data sets. I use scikit-learn for the majority of the things in this class and I would recommend using Python and uh, you know the standard Python data science libraries for uh, this class just because I think you know you can use whatever programming language you'd want. Uh, I know some people use Java I know Java as well, but I really could never see myself doing this class in Python. Maybe you could do it in R, but again, like the majority of the peers in this class, and I think even TA's instruction is geared a little bit towards Python. And as I said, I mean, we're applying decision trees, neural nets, boosting SVMs, k-nearest neighbors to your two data sets and presenting the results. So in doing so, you're like showing uh, validation curves, learning curves, um, and then you kind of talk about your metric that you use to score each of the algorithms. So it could be F1 scores, just normal accuracy if it's balanced data sets. Um, I used uh, something called balanced accuracy that scikit-learn offers. And overall, I think this was a good assignment. Just some tips are be wary of like the 12 page limit. And if you write as you run these experiments, I think it'll help. So that way you know how much real estate you have left and you know how deep you should dive into these experiments or like how many hyperparameters to tune. Uh, and that's about it. Unfortunately, on the next assignment, assignment two, which is randomized optimization, I did not fare very well. I got a 54 out of 100, and that's even after a regrade request. Started out at a 47, then went up to a 54, after you know providing some justification and counterpoints. Keep in mind that this is a very difficult time in the semester because this assignment, at least for us, was due the exact same weekend that the midterm was due, so you really have to split your time and then on top of that, I had friends and family in town the previous week, so I kind of knew it was not going to be my best assignment. Looking at the actual uh, tasks for this assignment, we were to implement four randomized optimization algorithms, and they were randomized hill climbing, simulated annealing, and a genetic algorithm, and MIMIC, M-I-M-I-C. And that last one, Mimic, I think is an algorithm that Dr. Isabel himself introduced in a paper that he co-authored. So I'm not really sure if that's actually like known very well in the community outside of Georgia Tech, and if he just put it in there because he himself is familiar with it, you know, being the author of it. But the other three were certainly mentioned in the AI course here at Georgia Tech, as well as in the course that I took in undergrad. Unfortunately, I wouldn't say that prior knowledge helped me out too much. I still found this assignment to be very difficult. We basically applied them to three different optimization problem domains that we got to choose. And that partially is like why I dislike this assignment is that we were supposed to choose the three optimization problems so that each optimization problem highlighted the advantages of a different randomized optimization technique. And that's just really difficult because we don't have that kind of prior knowledge to have a feel for which problem is going to line up well with which algorithm. And it just takes a long time to run the experiments, so guess and check kind of is just not a good approach and it took forever. I can't even say that I did a good job on it, obviously, given my grade. And the next part of the assignment, since there is more, is basically comparing the results of a neural net uh, that we used in assignment one and comparing those results to neural nets that use randomized optimization instead of the standard backprop gradient descent implementation. I definitely kind of hurried through this part and that's probably why my grade was pretty low and I spent too much time on the first portion as opposed to kind of looking at the neural nets section of the assignment. But overall, I mean, I just felt really rushed. It was, very difficult time 
Um, and I, I also felt like the instructions weren't super clear. Generally speaking, throughout this course, the assignment PDFs are not very clear on what they want. There's no clearly defined rubric. So you have to watch office hours, which is a pain. Um, but even then, I felt like in office hours, they weren't quite as clear as assignment one or some of the other assignments. So I'm going to go chronologically as opposed to going through all the assignments and then talking about the exams at the end. But the midterm is 90 minutes and you are going to use up all of the time. You have to do it with honor lock, so you have to do like a room scan with your webcam on and screen recording on. And you can't use the bathroom, so be sure to use the bathroom before you take the exam because I definitely had to go pee by the end and was rushing. Um, and they know that you're not going to be able to finish unless you're like an MO god. So you have to pick and choose your questions. Not all questions are worth the same amount of points. There's true and false questions in the beginning where you just say true or false and then justify with a sentence or two. And there's also like long response questions. So those long response ones are obviously worth more. And they kind of ask about like the general themes of the course that are kind of enforced throughout the lectures. I ended up with like a 30 something, let's see, do I have it up? 41 out of 120, so that's like a 30 something percent, which sounds abysmal, but actually um, looking at the statistics, that's like between a B and an A. So all things considered pretty, pretty good. You just have to keep in mind that this course is drastically curved at the end. I will like provide some class statistics, but generally speaking, like 30 something percent of the people get an A and 30 something percent of the people also withdraw from the class. And I can see why, because it really is a course that is very demanding and uh, it doesn't make you feel good, at least during the class, because you're getting pretty low scores. Mm -hmm.